Welcome back to the channel Star Seekers. my name is Luke and today I thought I'd do a little walkthrough guide for Fatoon Batula which is a bit of a deviation from my usual content but I figured I might start doing a few videos like this since I'm playing through the games anyway. If you've not yet checked out my review for this weird ass game then you'll find the link in the description box below and if you're not already subscribed to the channel then consider doing so as I publish new Switch reviews and content every few days. So just before we get started on the guide, there are a couple of points to note. Firstly, I'm not going to be covering off each ending in order, and instead I'm going to be doing them in a more efficient way, enabling you to get them all in one sitting. If you just want to watch the end sequences without the walkthrough, then you'll find timestamps in the description box below. And please be aware that ending number 9 does have an epilepsy warning as it contains a lot of flashing imagery. With all that said and done with, let's now get into the walkthrough. So each time you start a new game you begin in this temple like area and to get things started we simply need to walk up the stairs and to the end of this walkway and then just stand there until this big teethy creature appears. Once he creeps his way up to you, speak to him to get the vials and then you can be on your way, exiting the temple via the door at the bottom of the stairs. Now throughout this walkthrough I'm going to be referring to this first area as the hub. To start with we're going to be heading over to the right and crossing this bridge into the lake area and these first few steps are a setup for several of the game's endings. After entering the lake area head to this tree on the left and grab the knife then head up the stairs and across the bridge of lilies to the house in the centre where you then need to sleep in the bed to enter the nightmare version of the lake. Once here, head back over the Bridge of Lilies and around to the left towards the object in the distance, which turns out to be a grave and a hangman's noose. Next you need to equip the sword from your inventory and cut the noose with it, after which Mr Handyface will spawn next to you and after speaking to him he'll drop a piece of fruit which you can then grab. You can then walk off the edge of the shore into the lake to teleport back to the house, then head inside to the bed and return to the light world. Once back here you need to head round to the side of the house to cut the rope tethering the boat here, which will then drift off to the shore over by the grave. Head around to it and snag the fishing rod, and then continue on round the shore to the back left corner of the area where you'll find two different fish. Equip the rod and use it first to catch this orange fish, and next to catch a blue fish further out in the water. If for some reason either of these fish aren't here, then just exit and enter the area again and they should spawn in. So now we have all the items required to get our first few endings, so head on back down the steps to the hub area, and then walk up the little hill across from the temple door where you'll find this freaky looking cat known as the beast. At this point you're going to want to create a save file so you don't have to go through those first few steps again because we're going to have to kill this guy for several of the game's endings. Once you're all good and saved up, equip the fruit and toss it at the beast who will chow down on it before keeling over. You then need to equip a vial and take a sample of poison from the beast, then head back into the temple through the floating door, up to the tree, and drop the poison in the water to get ending zero. Now after each ending you're going to have to start a new game and load up a save file, so go ahead and do that now for the save file we just created. Once this is done, take out your knife and stab the beast, collect his blood in a vial, head back into the temple up to the water and drop the blood in there to get ending number 2.
Now as before you're going to want to start a new game and load up your beast save file, but this time we're going to be a bit nicer to the beast, so open your inventory, equip the blue fish and toss it to the beast. Once he's done eating, you need to speak to him and he'll be super happy about the fish and reward you with this fountain full of oil. Collect the oil in a vial, head back into the temple and dump it into the water to get ending number one. As is custom now, start up a new game and load your beast save file. For the moment, we're done with the beast and we'll be back to him soon, but for now head back down the hill and over to the right and enter the autumn area. Once here, head over to the right into this small house, and in the basement you'll find this skeleton who you're going to want to chuck the orange fish at. Now you'll probably have two fish in your inventory at the moment, but because it's dark they won't be lit up so you can't tell which one's which. So just chuck them both at him because it doesn't really matter. Once he's done eating the orange fish, his head will then fall off which you can pick up. And then you need to head back up out of the house back into the autumn area. Once here, you're going to want to head over to the left hand side where you'll find a well. Drop down into the well to find this smoking fella. And throw the skull at him before speaking to him to get another fountain. Fill your vial at this fountain, turn round and head back through the door into the temple, and as per usual, head up the stairs, dump the contents of the vial into the water to get ending 7. Loading up our beast save file once more, we need to head back into the autumn area, back over to the well and pick up the empty jar on the floor there. After this you need to head back through the hub area, up to the house on the lake, and then toss the empty jar at the painting there to capture the painting in the jar. Use the bed again to sleep and head back into the nightmare lake, and then head round to the side of the house where the boat was to find this friendly chap. Toss the painting in the jar to him before speaking to him, and he'll reward you with another fountain full of liquid bone. 
as usual collect the bone in a vial before heading back into the light world and then head back over to the beast and create a second save file. So now we have everything we need for another few endings. To start with you can head back into the temple first and toss the liquid bone into the water to get ending number 5. So now we've got the bones ending, you're going to want to start a new game and load up your second save file. From here you need to kill the beast with a knife, collect its blood. And then you need to pour the blood and the liquid bone into the pool of water next to the beast. Doing this will create a new type of liquid, the plant feed, which you can then take into the temple and pour into the water to get ending number 6. Start a new game and load up your second beast save file. Next we want to feed the fish to the beast and get some oil. After this you need to turn to your right and head up the little hill there and walk through these bushes which are hiding a secret tunnel to the sea area. Once here head forwards and dump the oil in the sea before heading over the walkway to the submarine which you can interact with to head to the bottom of the sea. Once here you want to turn to the right a little and head past the sunken church, through the dead seaweed before dropping off the edge of the chasm to reach suburbia. Now you can create another save file here if you want to save a little time, but once here you want to head into the house. After entering the house head up the stairs and to the left down this windy corridor where at the end you'll find a door which you need to head through. This will take you to an alternate version of the house and after heading back down the corridor into the house downstairs you'll find this character called the player. Kill the player with a sword, take a sample of his blood and then head back upstairs to the left hand side through the door back into the temple. Head upstairs, dump the player's blood into the water to get ending number 3.
Start a new game, load up beast save file number 2, and then we need to repeat the steps to get back to suburbia. For those who can't remember what they were, feed the fish to the beast to get the oil, turn to the right and head up the hill through the bushes to get to the sea, dump the oil in the sea and then head down the jetty to the submarine to get to the underwater area, and from there head over to the right past the sunken church through the seaweed and off the edge of the chasm to get to suburbia. Now once you're back here you're going to want to just keep walking forward for a long time. Eventually this Mickey Mouse head looking building will appear so head on up the ramp into it. Once inside open the door on the right and the guy will die. Head into the room over to the computer he was next to, then take a vial out and get a sample of soup from the cans next to the computer. Head back out of the building, then into the house where the player was, walk up the stairs and to the left to head through the temple door, and go ahead and dump the soup into the water to get ending 8. So we're on to our final couple of endings for the game. So start a new game and load up your second beast save file. Leave the beast alone for now and head to the sea area, then cross the jetty to the submarine and head underwater again. Once here you're going to want to head over to the right, but instead of passing the sunken church, go inside it and pick up the church key from the far left corner. After grabbing the key, head back out of the church to the right to the submarine to get back to the surface and then walk back down the jetty over to this bandstand thing to get back to the beast. Next we need to kill the beast again to get his blood and then mix the blood with a liquid bone to get the plant feed. Once you've done that then head once more into the autumn area and you're going to want to create a third save file here. After creating your save file, head forward and to the right down by the river, where you'll find these small plant tendrils sticking out of the ground. Use the plant feed on the tendrils which will make them grow huge, allowing you to walk up them to the area above the waterfall. Once there, head over to the left and drop down again so you're on the other side of the river, and then head forward and take the passageway on the right to get to the church. Now the church door is going to be locked here, so you need to open your inventory, select the church key, and then throw the key at the door to unlock it. After doing this you can then head inside, take a sample of the wine from the casks in there, and then you just need to head back outside, back through autumn to the hub area, and into the temple where you can then dump the wine in the water to get ending 4. So now we're on to our final and most complex ending, which we've already done most of the steps for. Start a new game, 
load up your third save file which should take you to autumn and then you want to go and get the skeleton skull from the house on the left. Give it to the smoking man in the well to collect some immortality from the fainting that he gives you and then make your way back to autumn via the temple door behind you. So now in your inventory you should have a vial of plant food and a vial of immortality. Next you're going to want to use plant food on the tendrils to climb up them and head back to the church. Before heading round to the church though, empty your vial of immortality into the river. And then before heading into the church, you're going to want to create your final fourth save file, as this final ending is very RNG based. Basically, what you need to do is head into the church and then back out again. And then walk around the back of the church, where if you're lucky, you'll see the moon. If this doesn't work first time, then just reload your save file and keep trying. Now once you do get it to work, interact with the moon, which will take you to the moon. Once here, keep walking forwards and interact with the moon in the moon. And then head on directly straight past this and keep walking, where you'll encounter the longest set of steps in the game. After making your way to the top of these billion steps, you'll then find the face of God, who you can speak to. Once you get done speaking to God, turn around and collect some of the flowing liquid in one of your vials, and then head on back down the steps where you'll find another door leading back to the temple. From here, all that's left to do is head up the stairs and pour your vial of free will into the water to get your final ending, but be warned that this is the ending with a bunch of flashing imagery, so if you suffer from photosensitive epilepsy, I recommend skipping this video forward 30 seconds or so. So that about does it for this walkthrough guide of Fatoon Batula and how to get all 10 endings to the game. Hopefully it helped you out and if it did hit that like button, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below and consider subscribing to the channel where I upload new Nintendo Switch reviews and content every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.